In sports, one of the worst things you can be labeled as is a bust. The title of draft bust usually goes to players who came in with great expectations only to have an either bad or extremely mediocre career. Most people in the sports world have different definitions of bust, but the definition I'll be using is a player who does not meet their expectations coming into the NFL and usually they were picked high in the first round, since to me, the more valuable the pick, the higher the risk, and the higher the risk, the bigger the bust if they don't pan out. There are also a number of factors behind why some guys made this video. For me, as like depending on who they were picked in front of or had opportunities to get but did not get because they selected the bust, that makes them a bigger bust to me. So this list is not in any order, but without further ado, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get on into the video. Going into the 1988 NFL Draft, by most scouts' accounts, there was not too much talent that most would have felt confident drafting early in the first round. Which is why Atlanta, who had the number one pick that year, tried their hardest to shop the pick before the draft, but after no one wanted to trade for it, they had their sights set on 6'5", 265 pound defensive end out of Auburn, Andre Bruce. And while earlier I said there was not too much interest in many prospects in the draft coming into it, you may be confused since there are a number of Hall of Famers drafted in the first round and drafted in this draft, such as Tim Brown, Michael Irvin, Randall McDaniel, and Thurman Thomas. But none of those guys had a huge amount of hype coming in, and if there was anybody scouts thought that could become something special in this draft, it was Andre Bruce. And the reason, in my opinion, that he's such a huge bust is because he was touted as the next Lawrence Taylor. And Lawrence Taylor is obviously one of the top five, probably greatest NFL players to ever do it. And by most people's accounts, if it's not Deion Sanders, it's Lawrence Taylor as the greatest defensive player in NFL history. And since he was compared to Lawrence Taylor coming into the draft, on top of him being drafted with the very first pick, he is a huge bust and one of the biggest busts to ever be drafted in the NFL. But all in all, he was able to stay in the NFL for 11 seasons, putting up very mediocre numbers, and even though he did not come close to his pre-draft expectation, he still had a somewhat successful career, but to me he is definitely one of the biggest busts, if not the biggest bust ever. Troy Aikman, Barry Sanders, Derek Thomas, and Deion Sanders. If you're wondering what these players have in common, there's two things. One, they're all Hall of Fame players, and two, they were all picked in the top five of the NFL draft. And you may be saying to yourself, wait, there's only four players there. But that's where Mr. Tony Mandarich comes in. As with the second pick in the 1989 NFL draft, the Green Bay Packers selected the tackle from Michigan State, Tony Mandarich. And I don't want to really sugarcoat how bad this pick was, but the context for the pick does make it somewhat reasonable at the time. Now, coming into the combine, Mandarich was definitely going to be drafted, as he had a very good career in Michigan State. But in the 1989 combine, Mandarich absolutely stole the show. As at 325 pounds, he had an insane 4 6 5 40 time, 39 reps of 225 in the bench press, and a 10 feet broad jump. For comparison, Cooper Cup, one of the best wideouts in the entire league, had the triple crown last year, ran a 4 6 2 40, and he was about 120 pounds lighter than Mandarich. So obviously, after the combine, Aikman was still the clear number one pick coming out of college, and obviously, positional value is gonna obviously win so the Cowboys needed a QB so they went with Aikman but the Packers thought they would be getting a generational O-lineman with the number two pick. Obviously since he's on this list that was not the case as Mandarich had a very subpar NFL career not even starting a game until year two where he was average at best and it was later discovered that Mandarich was juicing and on steroids so this is obviously why he was able to get in such insane physical shape. And obviously, steroids do not account for the complete athletic freak he was at that combine. But it definitely does pay, play like a solid part into it. And without steroids, he definitely would not reach those athletic heights. But to me, with the three Hall of Famers who were drafted right behind him, all who were greats in the game, 
all who contributed greatly and were the heart of their teams while they played, might even make this the biggest draft bust of all time. Peyton Manning or Ryan Leaf? While you may be confused at what I'm talking about, Ryan Leaf was seriously in the conversation with Peyton Manning as to who should be taken by the Colts with the number one pick in the 1998 NFL Draft. While everyone knew that Manning was a generational talent and would be something special from his days at Tennessee, Leaf ended up being similar to Zach Wilson in the 2021 draft where analysts were certain that if the Chargers picked Leaf with the second pick, that would be an all-time great consolation prize, even if they didn't end up getting the guy at number one, which ended up being Trevor Lawrence, who was obviously on pace to have a great NFL career, and Peyton Manning, who did end up having a great NFL career. Obviously, Hall of Famer, one of the top five greatest quarterbacks of all time. But again, it was seen as a great consolation prize at the time. But it ended up being anything but, as Leaf would win a whopping four games in three years in the NFL, throwing horrendous 14 touchdowns to 36 interceptions, and only having one season where he completed over 50% of his passes. After what I assume was some time reflecting, looking at the mirror, in the offseason, after playing a year with Dallas, Leaf decided to call it quits. But I can assure you that every Colt fan out there right now is extremely thankful that they went with one of the greatest QBs to ever play the game in Manning rather than one of the biggest busts in NFL history, like Ryan Leaf. Achilles Smith looked like the best quarterback in college football to many scouts. Coming into the draft in 1999, he was picked third, but Tim Couch seemed like the safest pick in the draft, and McNabb was not expected to be taken by the masses as most expect the Eagles to go with Texas running back Ricky Williams at number two. But Achilles Smith was seen as the best QB in college football by many of these scouts. And what makes the pick so extremely bad, and why I consider him to be one of the biggest busts in NFL history, is that the Saints offered their entire 1999 draft, their first round picks in 2000, 2001, and a second round pick in 2002, totaling about nine picks, but since Smith was the number one guy on the Bengals draft board, they were unwilling to make this league-changing trade. In return for sticking with their guy, Smith gave them one of the worst NFL careers ever relative to expectation as he threw five touchdowns to 13 interceptions while never starting over 11 games in four NFL seasons. And when he decided to call it quits, it was apparent that he was one of the worst draft picks to ever grace an NFL field. Jamarcus Russell was an athletic freak. At 6'6", six six, 265 pounds, he looked like he could legitimately come into the NFL day one and be a franchise QB. At least, that's what everyone thought. And for sure, what the then Oakland Raiders thought. Because before ever playing a snap in the NFL, the Raiders offered Russell a $61 million contract with $32 million of that guaranteed. After drafting him first overall in 2007, in hindsight, many fans put a lot of blame on the Raiders as there were stories that came out later that they were aware of his lack of work ethic and that he was in casinos and clubs almost daily. But that did not stop them from drafting him at one because most in the organization thought that this talent would be able to figure everything out for them. But the Raiders quickly found out this was not the case, as Russell threw only two touchdown passes to four interceptions in his rookie season, and did not even start a game until December because he reportedly did not even know the playbook well enough to get out on the field. After three seasons with the Raiders, where he threw a total of 18 touchdowns to 23 interceptions, and the Raiders had proof he did not even go home and watch film, as they gave him a blank piece of tape, they asked him what was going on in the tape, and how did he feel about it? And he said, it looks good to me. On top of him gaining 40 pounds in the offseason, this was obviously enough of Russell for the Raiders, and they decided to let him go. But this bust set the Raiders back almost a decade, as they did not go on to have a winning season until 2016, almost 10 years after drafting Russell. And honestly, in most people's eyes, he is the biggest draft bust in NFL history. And he actually looked like a completely safe pick no way this guy would be a bust. At the very worst, he'll be a good starting quarterback for years to come. Coming out of LSU, he looked like a dog, and he obviously just wasn't. For whatever reason, maybe it was the mental aspect of the game. 
maybe he just really couldn't play. Maybe it was a situation because the Raiders weren't giving him much help. They were a pretty bad organization. Like I said, even after he left, they didn't do anything for another seven years. So there were definitely a number of factors at play for why Jamarx Russell was a bust. But that's it for this video. If you want me to make a part two of this video, let me know because there definitely are some more busts out there. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this in the future, subscribe as I'm going to be trying to deliver NFL content consistently just like this. But I'm out of here. Peace.